Hey, what's up guys? Welcome. Uh, we're going to kick things off in this series of tech tips. Firstly, with a really simple example, and I want to do this because I want to just illustrate how something as simple as labeling a control can really help uh, improve your workflow. Now this rack that we're going to be designing is sort of a cheat EQ, and it's especially useful for people who are just starting out uh, with music production. Now Bluff Monkey has done some excellent content on how to learn how to hear EQs correctly. And of course we're talking about relating frequencies to concepts like mud and boom and sub and uh, air and so on. Um, so it's such a simple premise this, but uh, let's just dive in and take a look at how we set this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in an EQ plus and I'm just going to group this into an FX layer. Uh, depending on how detailed you want you could add multiple instances of EQ plus here. We'll just start with one for now. I'll set up one or two of the bands and then I'll jump ahead a little bit and show you what the finished product looks like. But let's uh, bring up our EQ plus first here and what we're going to be doing is referencing something like this. So there's a bunch of uh, different content out there that you can find and reference. Uh, this one I thought is a quite a nice simple one to follow. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to set up a preset EQ that relates to these areas of the frequency spectrum. So something like rumble, boom, etc. Um, and set that up so that when you decide to EQ something, you don't have to think about the frequencies, you can just grab something which sounds a little bit more natural, like add warmth or, or so forth. So let's um, jump in first and we'll just put in a low shelf EQ. We'll set the frequency to about 75, 70 hertz, somewhere around there, maybe even, let's go down to about 65 actually. Uh, so we get that preset there uh, and then as we go along what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in macros for these so let's just go and add in a macro we're going to make this one bipolar they do show it as only coming down on that side but we're going to do this bipolar and we're going to give it just gain this up uh, i think we we'll probably never use this much but let's let's do a let's just stick to a 10 db boost for all of these so we can now cut and boost this frequency here and we're going to call this sub. Let's jump into the next one. We're going to look at boom and rumble. So this is going to be from about, we'll go from about 90 up to about 200 somewhere there. We're going to add in another macro. This time around we're going to use a bell curve. And we'll center this frequency. Remember, we're going from 90. So we'll center this one around 120. And there we go. Again, we're going to do this one unipolar, uh, bipolar. And let's give this 10 dB boost again. Once again, we're going to call this boom slash rumble. Another important one to do here, let's put in this mud frequency. Again, typically, I'm not going to boost at this position here but let's just add that in as an option we'll add in a bell curve center frequency about yeah 320 will work 315 is usually the sort of center point for that uh, let's add in again again of 10 and let's just check our we'll call this mud and we'll just check the Q value, I might narrow this one slightly. Cool, so I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. We'll set up a number of, of these different um, curves inside of here quickly. I'll catch in just a sec. Great, so here we go. I've done a couple more of these. These are kind of the settings that I've used here. Yeah, you can tweak these as you see fit, whatever works for you. For you. Uh, but we'll just run through this. We've done these three first ones. I've added in some warmth at around 500 Hertz, uh, slightly reduced the Q value, so it's a little bit wider, that one. Let's see, so we've got that band there. We've got clarity and harshness. So clarity you can boost and harshness you can remove. Um, I'm not gonna bother to add in Q value controls here because the idea is that you get to a starting point using this and then you can go in and fine tune the stuff as you see fit. Uh, we've also added in presence here around five kilohertz. Uh, we've added in a crispness at the top that's around 10. It could even come down slightly from that to sort of include sibilance, which is around 8K as well. Um, 
and then also an air band at the top which is a high shelf just really high frequency stuff that can boost slightly there cool so you've got these controls now without having to look at this stuff you've got this right in front of you we're going to transfer this now to the preset page we're going to click on this one here you want to be doing the preset page, not the device page. The device page will only allow you to do the gain and mix. Uh, it doesn't work with sort of variable stuff at all. Um, let's just add in a performance page of the top, the preset performance page. We're going to add in all of our various nodes that we've programmed in here. There we go, everything's in, and we can close this down. Now I can pretty much minimize everything that we have here. And there we go, we've got a really simple looking little plugin with eight knobs on it now. Uh, so when it comes down to our EQing, we don't have to think about this in terms of frequencies. These frequencies are pre-programmed in there for us. So let's play around with this um, beat that I have in here. So we wanna make it a little bit more sub-heavy. And let's assume that it's too muddy. Warmth, maybe too subby, let's rather focus that. That's better, it's a little bit more punchy there now. Let's bring out some presence. Too much, let's take that away. Bring out the hats. A little bit more clarity in the mids. And we can boost the air. So there you go, incredibly simple concept this, but it can really speed up your workflow, especially like I said, for, for new producers, when you're trying to learn where these frequencies all exist. It's a good way to think about them in these terms. Um, so having something like this, you can just drop it on, make your initial uh, changes to the sound, uh, this is also really good to work like this using your ears rather than looking at a digital display of a frequency domain. It, it, it makes more sense to listen to this first and you find something that works. Uh, like I said, this is intended for you to then also go in here afterwards. And once you've kind of dialed things in and you want to make additional changes, you can. You can just dive into this EQ or we could even leave that one as is and dive into something a little bit more surgical and make additional changes to this. If you want to cut out specific frequencies or whatever, but your sort of broad strokes EQing is done here and you don't have to think about this in terms of numbers or frequencies. You can just look at this and think, oh, my sound needs a bit more warmth. So dial up the warmth. So yeah, just a, just a good little example on how you can leverage something simple like these controls to kind of really make your life a little bit easier. Let's jump into the next video. I'll see you then. Cheers.